In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The service continues with the intro it as printed in the bulletin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God,
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace throughout all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Epiphany is from Isaiah chapter 49. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother, he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the pre preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the servant of rulers. Kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand in honor of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. 
I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water had said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Christ, which means Messiah. He brought him to Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Thee, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. We invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Well, it's good to see all of you here today, boys and girls. In our children's message today, I'm going to hope that you'll remember two things. The first one is about a lamb, and the second one is about sins. What's the first one about? That's right. And the second one? Sins. That's right. So we're going to talk about a lamb, and we're going to talk about sins. So boys and girls, in the Old Testament, that's the part of the Bible that came first, they used to have to sacrifice lambs. Anyone know what that means, to sacrifice a lamb? Jonathan? That means they had to kill the lamb. And when they would kill the lamb, that lamb would have blood that would be shed. But see, in the killing of that lamb they were taught to remember that there was sins that were once covered by the killing of another lamb. See, in the Passover, they had to kill lambs so that that their sins could be forgiven and so that the the, uh, sons were not uh, taken and killed. And so in the Old Testament, what I want you to remember is that lambs had to be killed for the forgiveness of sins. And they would have to do that regularly. Again and again and again, they would take a lamb and they would kill it so that its blood could be shed for the forgiveness of sins. Because they all had sins. Now boys and girls, I told you we wanted to remember two things, right? One was about a lamb and the other one was about what? sins. Because you see, the people of the Old Testament weren't the only ones who had sins. You and I have sins too, right? And I bet if they were honest with you, we could ask the adults in the congregation and and they would tell you that they had sins too. In fact, boys and girls, when we began our service, they all told the Lord that they had sins when they confessed them in confession and absolution. You see, what is a sin, boys and girls? Does anyone know what a sin is? Will, do you know what a sin is? Carly, can you help your brother out? What is a sin? Anyone? Emma? Yeah, that you did something wrong 
according to God, right? That you actually, you didn't obey God's word, like uh, not honoring our parents, right? <laughs> or, or being rude or uh, uh, angry or mean to your friends, right? Or uh, forgetting to pray or, uh, yeah, those are called sins, right? You see, and in the Old Testament, remember, boys and girls, that lamb had to, be, had to be killed so the blood could be shed for the forgiveness of sins. <laughs> so what's going to happen with our sins? Because you have sins, I have sins, all of us have sins. All of us are disobedient uh, to the Lord. And that puts us kind of in a bind. I mean, what happens if I have to pay for my sins? Do you want to pay for your sins? No. Oh, I hope not. Do you want to pay for your sins? No. Nobody wants to pay for their sins. In the Old Testament, they had a lamb to kill, and that blood would be shed, and their sins were forgiven. So what about us? How are our sins forgiven? Who's going to pay for our sins? Will? That's exactly right. Well, it's Jesus who pays for our sins. And you know he did it on the cross, right? You see, John calls Jesus a lamb. Well, that's kind of strange. I mean, Jesus doesn't have four legs and wool and go bah, right? Jesus isn't a lamb, but yet he is a lamb. He's the lamb of God. And like the Old Testament lambs had to be killed and shed blood for the forgiveness of sins, what happened to Jesus? He got killed. He got killed. <laughs> and he shed his blood. They pierced him with a spear. And his blood was shed. And why was Jesus killed? Why did Jesus spill his blood? Naomi? Yeah, to save our sins. To pay for our sins. <laughs> Remember, boys and girls, there were two points I wanted you to remember. I said we were going to talk about a lamb and about our sins. But both of those points are one. Because there is a lamb who has taken our sin. And his name, Will said, is Jesus. He is the Lamb of God who was killed and whose blood was shed to pay for your sins, for my sins, and for all of our sins, so that we might live with Him forever. Isn't that good news? That Jesus paid for our sins so that we don't have to? Yeah, it is. Will you pray with me and give thanks to God? Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for sending Jesus who shed his blood to forgive our sins. Help us to remember that Jesus paid the price for all our sins. In his name we pray. Amen. You can all go back to your seats.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please pray with me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold the one who was sent from the Father, the one who was called even from the womb of his mother, the one who pleased the Father by standing with sinners as our substitute, the one to whom the gates of heaven were opened when he was washed and the Spirit descended upon him, the one who would take upon himself your sins and mine so that they could put, be put to death with him on the cross, the one who has taken away the sins of the world. Behold, the Lamb of God. John the baptizer, who had first been in the presence of this Lamb of God when he was yet in the womb of his mother, could now see this chosen one face to face, like I see you and you see me. John had been there when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, and John was there on this day when Jesus came to him again, possibly right from his own wilderness temptation. And as John saw him coming, he confessed that Jesus was the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And while John was there to see him face to face, like I see you and you see me, it was not in the seeing of Jesus that John became confident that Jesus was this special lamb, or that his own cousin would be the one to take away the sins of the world. He saw Jesus all right, but it was not in his seeing Jesus that he was given to confess that this Jesus is the Lamb on whom all sins have been placed. John's seeing, you see, is nothing compared to his hearing. Having already seen for quite some time, John confesses that his seeing had not revealed this mystery to him. I myself did not know him, he says. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove and it remained on him, but I myself did not know him, he reiterates, until the one who had sent both him and John says to John, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. And so John's seeing was enlightened with his hearing. The Word of God is what made John able to see that Jesus was the Son of God and the Lamb of God and the one on whom all our sin has been put. The very next day, John would see Jesus again. And again, the word that had been given to John is believed by John and then is confessed by John. Behold the Lamb of God. But this time, when John confessed what the word of God had declared about this Jesus, there were others there to hear it too. The two disciples heard John's confession of what this Jesus had taken upon himself, and they got up and began to follow him. When asked by Jesus why they had begun to follow him, they referred to Jesus as their teacher and asked where he was staying. They wanted to know where Jesus was going so that where Jesus was going, they could go too. So they came and they went and saw where Jesus was staying and that night they dwelt there with Jesus, who John confessed would be taking away the sins of the world. If you knew you had sins, wouldn't you go where Jesus was, taking away the sins of the world? These disciples must have known that they had sins that needed to be taken away. Why else would you follow this man whose name was Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, 
Why else would you follow this man unless you've heard a a word about this man? Why else would you get up and go where Jesus was even on a Sunday morning unless you had heard that this Jesus might even take upon himself your very own sin? And so the word that John had heard had put a confession on his lips What God had said about the one on whom the Spirit would descend would be spoken by John about Jesus, who had been shown to be the Lamb of God when he was baptized by John at the Jordan River. And when John had spoken what this Word of God had given him to speak, the two disciples had the Word produce in them the faith where they then too would follow Jesus to where he was staying. And then as John had confessed, It was now Andrew who did the speaking that this confession about Jesus had given him to speak to his brother Simon. We have found the Messiah, the Christ. And in this pattern of hearing and believing and confessing, the word about Jesus would begin to spread. For while many would see this Jesus with their eyes, it would only be through the hearing of the word which God first had spoken about this Jesus that anyone would be given to believe and to confess that the Jesus they saw with their eyes was the Jesus upon whom their sins and your sins have been put. Seeing is good, but hearing, you see, is finally what matters. In those days, many were given to see Jesus walking and talking around the countryside. Even today, we can see in the writings of both Jewish and Roman historians that the eyes of many had beheld Jesus, and most of those eyes who had gazed upon the flesh of this humble carpenter would never make the bold confession that we hear being spoken by John and Andrew in our text. Because seeing Jesus with your eyes is nothing compared to hearing Jesus with your ears. For John, for Andrew, and even for you. John had seen the Holy Spirit descend upon him at his baptism. But to his seeing, God had given a word. God had told John that when he saw that happen, he would know that was the one who would come to baptize in the Holy Spirit. And so John does not remain alone in his hearing, but in his believing, he confesses that this Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so Andrew does the same. And Peter would do the same. And eventually, 2,000 years later, you have done the same. John saw Jesus face to face like I see you and you see me, but it was his hearing that had convinced him that his sins would be taken away. So what is it that convinces you? Is it your seeing? or your hearing. For I have to warn you that if it is your seeing, then you will likely wind up concluding that the sins of the world have ended up on someone other than Jesus. Here in the divine service, for example, you have never seen Jesus with your eyes. You've never looked upon that humble man in the way that John looked upon him. You see me and I see you and we can see each other, but your eyes have never gazed upon his flesh or his blood. And that might give you the opportunity to believe that this Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, is not here among us in his own divine service. And when you see the sins of your neighbors, even your brothers and sisters in Christ who have confessed with you 
and been absolved with you and been baptized like you and been fed with you by the body and blood of the Jesus who took his, their sins upon him. All you see is another man or woman who has fallen short of the glory of God. <laughs> and if you've known them long enough, they've probably offended you or spoken ill of you or not been patient with you. That's what you see, right? And so your eyes begin to tell you that your brother or sister in Christ has sins which have not been placed upon Jesus. And sometimes you begin even to wonder about your own sins of thought, word, and deed. You're living as if something mattered more than God and His Word. You're taking of His name and blessing for granted. Your lack of fervent prayer, your failure to let His love have its way with you while uh, you cling to your prejudices, your careless words which cut far deeper than sticks and stones, your turning your nose to those who need your help, even those deeds you did manage to do for which you thought you should receive honor and glory. Your eyes can't actually see Jesus coming to you. You've never seen Him here in the presence of, God, of, of the hearers of His Word assuring you that your sins were be, would be added to the sins that were placed upon Him on the cross when He was crucified, buried, and dead. And so because you've been fooled into believing that what you see is most important, you might even begin to doubt whether Jesus has taken your sins or their sins upon himself. Or even if he is here in his divine service giving rest to you who labor and are heavy laden by the many sins which you know must finally be paid by someone. And so your eyes are able to deceive you. <clears throat> but there is something, of course, that is far better than what your eyes can see. It's what your ears can hear. And here, in the divine service, whether you have seen him or not, God has been speaking his word to you so that you would have something to hear in which to cling to and something that might convince you and something which will actually confess to you that this Jesus is the Lamb who has taken your sin and their sin upon Himself. Because in fact, upon Himself, He has taken the sins of the world. And that means you. <laughs> you didn't see Jesus, but you heard Him when he commanded your pastor to tell you that all your sin had been forgiven in his name. For he is faithful and just and will forgive the sins that you confess and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You didn't see Jesus, but you heard him when he was speaking to you through the mouth of Isaiah the prophet. For there he told you that he was the one called from his mother's womb to preserve for him a people. He didn't see Jesus, but when his words were spoken through the words of the apostle Paul, you heard that he had given you a word in which to trust, that the word about Jesus is the word that calls sinners into the one holy communion that makes them able to wait for the day that they will see him in the flesh with their eyes. That word of Christ that you hear is a word that will sustain you to the end, guiltless on the day that you see him. For the God who called you into this fellowship of the one true faith will be faithful to complete his work in you. And while we won't be dining on his body and blood today, <laughs> I am certain that you can recall the many days on which Jesus was present according to his word in bread and wine so that you might taste and yes, even see 
that Jesus, the one who was baptized at the Jordan River, is the Jesus who has taken your sins along with the sins of the world upon himself. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Behold the Jesus who has taken your sins and mine upon Himself. Behold the Jesus who was seen by John and Andrew and thousands of others with their very own eyes, but who finally gives faith in the forgiveness of sins only by giving you His Word. You see, your sins must finally be put on someone. If you want to trust your eyes, then your sins will remain with you. For we can all see that we're the ones that are guilty of them. But what you see with your eyes, my friends, is nothing compared to what you hear with your ears. And if you do not want to keep your sins to yourself, (laughs) then rejoice in the word that you have heard and behold the Lamb of God who is Jesus. For all your sins have been taken by him. And that is what we'll confess to whomever we are given the chance. In his name, amen. And now may the peace of God that transcends all understanding guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. The service continues as we confess the Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of the church are printed for you in the congregation at prayer, specific prayer requests for the ill, for the Ill and others as well. Added to that, uh, actually I think it made it on there, Carolyn Greenway, the aunt of Bob Bird, uh, who suffers in a rehab place in Alamo uh, with pancreatic cancer. We pray for Carolyn. We also pray for the family of our dear brother Einer who received a Christian burial yesterday. Also the family of a 28-year-old man, Craig uh, Travers, a, friend, a family friend of Gina Hampton who was tragically uh, killed or died uh, last week. Uh, they're still trying to find out what happened. And so we pray for his wife who was left behind and all the family and friends who suffer. Uh, we also always pray for our ill and everything else as well. We gather our hearts in prayer. Almighty God, we give thanks to you that as you once formed Isaiah from the womb to be your servant, so you have also called us to be born again as your children by means of holy baptism. As your people now forgiven for the sake of Christ, we pray, incline your ear to us and hear our cries for your mercy. Continually speak the new song of your gospel into our ears and hearts, so that it might in turn be the song of praise upon our lips to all who will hear. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you for the work of your apostle Andrew, who told Peter the word that he had heard and then brought his brother to you. Preserve us from any temptation that would lead us to conceal your steadfast love and faithfulness from others. Within the vocations you have entrusted to us, bestow upon us every good gift needed to tell others of you and invite them to hear your saving word in our congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Creator and preserver of all things, 
We give thanks that you form us in the womb and give us life. We pray that you would foster among us a high regard for your gifts of motherhood and childbearing as your appointed means for bringing new life into the world. Bless all women who are with child, granting health and safety through pregnancy, labor and delivery, and strengthen the zeal you have of those who have opportunity to serve the cause of life. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, the help of the helpless, have mercy upon all who cry to you for help. Heal the sick, injured and afflicted according to your will, and in the meantime give them the glad confidence of your gracious favor for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, including Mary Jane, Joe, Jean, Wanda, Frank, Kathy, Kevin, Phyllis, Dorothy, Dottie, and Carolyn. Visit those who are incarcerated by authority or homebound by infirmity and separated from the gathering of your people. Assure them that you will not forget your people wherever they are found and use us as your instruments to relieve their solitude as we are able. Be the consolation also of those to whom it is given to mourn, including the family of Einar and the family of Craig. Grant that they might find their comfort in Christ, the resurrection and the life. Lord, in your mercy. Everlasting Father, with thanksgiving for all of your people whom you have delivered from this veil of tears, we pray that you would sustain us to the end, that by your grace we might be found guiltless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is in your hands that we pray with, the, with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us share at this time with one another the peace of the Lord, having had our sins taken to the cross by Jesus. Extend a special word of welcome to our guests and visitors that are here today. We're glad you're here. We'd love to have you worship with us whenever you're able. We do ask that everyone take a moment to fill out the burgundy folders so we have a record of your worshiping and a way to be in touch with you. We now continue with the offering.
remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.